Good morning. He is risen. All right, some of you got the message. The response is, He is risen indeed. Ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. I'm glad this morning that the tomb is empty and my belly is full. If you did not make it here in time for breakfast, I apologize for you. Um, we had a lot of you came and we're so glad. There's probably some leftovers, so if you're still starving to death after this, if you wind your, find your way to the kitchen, there might be some eggs or something left over. We had Belgian waffles, we had biscuits and gravy, we had sausage links, there was some bacon, it was delicious. So uh, we are glad that you're here. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to mention. Uh, real quickly, briefly, there is uh, sort of the choir is going to be doing some music, so we're going to be less preaching, more singing, worship, celebrating today. We've got a video we're going to start out with. At the very end of the service, we are taking up a special love offering as you exit at the very end for uh, fence repairs. Just want to put that in. That's in lieu of the regular offering. If you're a visitor here, just wanted to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here today. And I wanted to mention the beautiful flowers we have here donated by the Wellman family in honor of Aiden's birthday today. So um, we're wishing Aiden a happy birthday with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven. And we just wanted to, uh, to remember the Wellman family and continue that he is celebrating with our Lord and we are celebrating down here with our Lord. And uh, is there anything that I forgot to mention? Does it sound good, Cody? Am I good? All right. Well, let's just open with a word of prayer, and then our praise team is going to come, and we're just going to begin to worship. Father, thank you for the glorious good news of Easter Sunday morning, that not only did you rise from the grave, but that empty cross and that empty tomb promises us that those graves have no power on those who have given their hearts and lives to you. Your word says that um, if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, that we can know that the death and the grave holds no power over us as well. So this Easter morning, we give you thanks and praise for the glorious uh, good news of your love, of your salvation that gives us the best life here and now and the best life yet to come as we go and join those who've gone on before us to their eternal reward in heaven with you this Easter morning. I pray that you would allow our hearts to be lifted, allow us in the, the season of dryness that we have experienced. Lord, Ezekiel talks about those dry bones and how only you can breathe life into dry bones. We thank you that this morning we can give you praise that even in these bones you can breathe some life into us as we celebrate the good news of the gospel of peace that assures us the best life now and the best life yet to come. Give us your grace, grace and your mercy as we celebrate together and meet the needs of those who are here today. May our hearts be lifted and encouraged as we worship together the glorious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And everyone said? Amen. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betrayed. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Pilots struggle. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilified. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denied. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They roll him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's come. It's right. See Jesus walking the cow. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirits burning. But you see, it's only right. Sunday's come. It's right. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. 
the soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's fine. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's fine. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The sky called dark. My king heals his spirit. It's Friday. Hope is lost. Death has won. Sin has come. And Satan just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus is there. A soldier stands guard. And a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a cup. Brothers and sisters, Sunday is here. Amen. Death is defeated. Hell has been overcome. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter, amen, and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen laying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from the Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Amen. Friday is past, Saturday is past, and Sunday is here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, worship with us this morning. Give him the glory. Death and hell have been defeated. Let us sing his praises this morning.
Are you guys alive today? And if not, the cross is there and it is empty. We can live freely and I'm so thankful we can live alive no matter what's going on in our lives because our Savior came to give us life. So and we are going to go ahead and move on to friendship time. And so before we go on to friendship time, uh, if, in, case, in case that wasn't loud enough, don't worry, just wave your hands and we'll keep, the more you wave your hands, the more we'll turn up the volume. Hey, we're excited that, you know, the tomb is empty. He is risen. Amen. Isn't it great to know that even though death looms everywhere we look, that new life always springs forth. So, you know, one of the things I learned from one of my great theological influential movies, Jurassic Park, is that life always finds a way. So, Nick and Taylor, could you kind of move into the center aisle as we go into friendship time? We want to let you know life has found a way, and Nick and Taylor are expecting their first child. Woo! During friendship time, greet them, greet one another, and let's celebrate life all around us this morning. God bless you.
celebrating today. Our Savior has conquered sin and death, and he has risen from the tomb. He's not there anymore. He came out of that tomb, and he has called us into life, and he has called us to come out of our tombs, run out of our tombs into our Savior's arms. All our tombs of uh, addiction, depression, sadness, uh, stress, anything, he has called us to run run into our Savior's arms out of those tombs. And I'm just so thankful for that today, that our Savior um, has sacrificed, given that sacrifice for us because he loved us so, so much that he, sinless, went and died on the cross for my sins and for our sins. And he shed his blood and broke his body so that we wouldn't have to. He took all that sin away and washed, washed it away like it never happened. And I'm just so thankful for that. I'm thank, thankful for the blood that our Savior has applied to our hearts to wash them white and clean. And so just as we sing, thank you for the blood applied, just really focus on thanking our Savior for that glorious day that he, you know, he, the sacrifice that he made and the glorious day that we celebrate today and that we can have freedom. We do have freedom in our Savior as long as we have accepted that salvation. So sing with us. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. I was a
Let's pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that we celebrate that blood applied to our hearts and our lives. It makes no sense that the perfect God would love imperfect children. Thank you that you have not waited for us to get our act together to clean up our lives. Instead, right in the hog pen like that prodigal son, down on our hands and knees, longing to, to eat the filth that the pigs were eating. Lord, you loved us there at our lowest point. And in that lowest point of our lives, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. That on that third day, he would be raised to life and that your love could come to us without hesitation. I'm reminded of the father as he saw the son a distance off, didn't wait for the son to arrive, but he ran to his prodigal, threw his arms around his neck, gave him a kiss on the cheek, ordered that the fatted calf be killed and a meal and the celebration would be made. And we just give you praise that we this day celebrate that we, the prodigals, have been loved by a good, good father who has not held back any good thing from us, even in our sin, not held back even the precious life of your son, Jesus Christ, but instead applied his blood to our sins so that in our iniquity and in our sinfulness that we might receive the grace of your forgiveness through that blood applied to our lives. Today we celebrate that blood that was spilled, that was shed for us, the body that was broken. Today as we get, prepare our hearts to receive communion together, we give you praise that these elements represent the love of a father who would not leave any child behind, but beckons to every one of us right in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of our sorrows, in the midst of our losses, in the midst of our devastation, Lord, you come to us and simply say, please receive my love. Thank you that you loved us for who we are, how we are, and where we are. But that love is so great that it will not leave us there, that your love continues to draw us deeper into the fullness of your will for our lives, continues to lift us up, to set us up, to draw us nearer to you now than we've ever been before. So we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor this day. We give you the thanks and the praise. In the beautiful name of Jesus Christ, we prayed. And everyone said, amen. amen. Our choir is going to come at this time. Oh, offering. The choir can come up while the ushers come. And they're going to get ready to sing a song. And the ushers are going to receive the offering. Will, would you pray for the offering as we receive our morning offerings? are coming this morning. I'm going to read a little bit of scripture for you. Ushers are coming through. Cody asked me if I would sing a solo. And I said, no, Cody. I'm going to save that for you until next time. Um, in the essence, to get you home in time to enjoy those uh, baskets. Um, and there is no children's church today, in case you didn't figure that out. Um, we do have nurseries. If you need them, they're available to you if you need them. Nancy's at the back, so we have a toddler nursery downstairs and, and a room back there. But I love having kids in the surface. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Our children learn faith from you and I. Amen? Amen? And part of the freedom to be who we are in Christ is a lesson that they have to learn. Right, Daniel? Right? So I wanted to read to you from Ezekiel chapter 37. And it's the valley of dry bones, and it says this, The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit. The Lord had set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. 
He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you, and make flesh come upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. Sound like a good song, amen. A rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and he says, I looked, and tendons in the flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you will be my people. You, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. I don't know about you, but it feels like since 2019 there's been some dry bones. Amen? We've had a season. I heard somebody talking about the weather the other day, and they said with all the rain that we've having, that actually in America, he said, there has been a 23-year drought. Did you know how dry it was? Well, I got news for you. That drought extends far beyond the grass and the garden and the fields. That drought extends to the bones that serve the Lord. David said in Psalm 51, Against you and you alone have I sinned, O Lord. But David said, May the bones that you have crushed, that you have allowed the weight of the world to fall upon because of my own choices and my own sinfulness, may you put those bones back together. And folks, I'm here to tell you on this Easter Sunday morning, only the Spirit of the Lord, only Jesus, the Messiah, can breathe life into dry bones. Amen? Amen. That's what we celebrate here this morning. The choir is going to sing. In just a moment, we're going to take communion together. Everyone's welcome to receive communion, old and young alike, regular attenders, first-time visitors. If you want to receive elements, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine, too. There's nothing hocus-pocus or scary about it. We are simply the same way that we honor this flag for what it represents. We represent this bread and this juice as a representation of the sacrifice of Christ's life given for us, the same way that this flag is a representation of the lives that have been given for our freedom. So if you want to receive those this morning, it is a spiritual gift of your act of love towards Christ if you receive these elements. But if you this morning are feeling a little dry, if you this morning are feeling like the enemy has been beating you up. Amen. How many of you remember Rocky? Remember the movie Rocky? Some of you all know. I remember Rocky when it was only one Rocky. Do you remember Rocky when there was only one? And two and three and four. There's what? Five Rockies and three Creeds now. Wow. What a franchise. But I remember that first Rocky because remember he was on the floor. He had to have his eye cut so he could, so he could see he was down. Apollo had him on the ground. Apollo thought, I got him beat. I've got him down. I've got the victory here. But Rocky refused to give up. 
That cross represents a God who refused to give up on you and me. And you might feel like you've gone 10 rounds with Apollo Creed this morning in your spirit, but I've got news for you. You might be down, but it doesn't mean you're out. Amen? So this morning, the choir is going to sing, Jesus, Messiah. And this morning, as you listen to the words of this song, and as we receive the elements of communion, allow the wind, the spirit says the four winds, that word wind can also be interpreted as spirit. God said, prophesy my spirit to come into you. This morning, if you've been beaten, if you've been battered, if your bones are a little dry, and it's time for a little fresh wind, a little fresh fire, you go back to a study that we did. If it's time for you to breathe a little new life into your old bones, then this morning, just say, Jesus, Messiah, thank you that you died on that cross for me. Come into my heart, come into my life. Spirit, breathe life into me. Worship together with us as the choir sings this morning.
ask our ushers to come forward this morning as they pass the trays to you and you receive the cup and the bread I ask that you would hold those elements till we receive them together let's give prayer and a thanks father we give thanks for these elements for the bread and for the wine the reminders of the body and the blood of Christ broken for us and spilled out for us we give you thanks for these elements and as we prepare to take them may you search our hearts help us to let go of the things that have taken hold of us that keep us from trusting you the things in our hearts that we feel unworthy about the things in our lives lord that would would give us any hesitation to simply run to the arms of the loving father who seeks to embrace us as we receive these elements, I ask that it would be an act of your grace spilled into our lives. And if there is anyone here, Lord, who does not know that eternal hope of the blood of Christ, of the body of Christ that sets us free from the law of sin and death, may we, in the taking of these elements, simply make it an act of confession that we believe that you are the Son of God. We believe you sacrificed your life for us. We believe that you raised on the third day. And as we receive these elements, we believe that we receive the gift of your grace wrought for us through an empty cross and an empty tomb. We give you praise and thanks. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Receive the elements. Hold on to them until we receive them together.
in Scripture, Paul reminds us that Jesus had gathered with his disciples on that Thursday, the very next day that he would be sacrificing his life. And he took a loaf of bread, and after the meal, he broke the bread, saying to them, this is my body, which is broken for you. Today, as you receive the element of the bread, be reminded that Christ, in a tangible way, laid down his body for you. Take and eat in remembrance of our Lord. In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup, giving thanks for it. He told his disciples, this is my blood spilled out. His blood, the blood that coursed through the veins, the body that he took upon himself in the likeness of our human bodies, that blood would flow down the body, down onto the cross and into the ground that he spoke into existence. And he told his disciples, my blood will be spilled out so that your sins can be forgiven. As you drink this, as you taste it, as you swallow, remind yourself and be reminded forevermore that all of our sins, though they be as scarlet, are as white as snow through the blood of Christ, which forgives us and purifies us from even the stain of the guilt of sin in our lives. Take and drink in remembrance of your forgiveness in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you thanks. As we receive these elements this morning, we are reminded that through the broken body, the spilled out blood of the Son of God, crucified on the cross, laid in a tomb, raised back to life on the third day. As we receive these elements, may we be reminded that the Spirit of Christ that he promised to send is the same Spirit that raised him from the dead and that that is the spirit that lives and indwells our lives. Thank you that your grace renews us, restores us, and reminds us that your grace and your healing and your deliverance comes not for the lack of the storms in our lives, not for the lack of a difficult circumstance, not for the lack of drought and hurricanes and dry bones, but right in the midst of the valley of our driest days. You flood into these lives, breathe back into these dry bones, the breath of life, and give us new life here and now, and life yet to come. We give you praise and thanks this Easter Sunday morning for the gift of an empty tomb, for the gift of filled hearts and whole lives that can be restored into your image as you call us to trust you. We don't seek understanding today. We seek only to have a deeper faith and a deeper trust of your love and your deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said. Amen. Listen to the words of this final song as we close our time together.
Amen. Amen. There's one more last song. And before we sing that, I want to remind you that the, as you leave today after this last song and a closing prayer and a benediction, that uh, you can give the offering for the fence. And Sydney Blevins, she was afraid some of you may not make it to breakfast. So she made a big old cake. And we love eating cake, amen? So there will be cake for you as you leave today. <clears throat> Before you leave, I wanted to read you Jesus' last words to us, his disciples. Then the 11 disciples in Matthew 28, verse 16. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Some people think that Easter is sort of the wrap-up, the big story of the Christian church. But actually, 40 days from now, there's a day we call Pentecost. And it's the day that Jesus sent his spirit to inhabit, to indwell his disciples, to give them the power to go and to make disciples of all nations. It is the power of Christ's spirit come to us through that, through that miracle of Pentecost that gives us the strength to live the lives he's called us to live. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that I don't live this life on my own. God has surrounded me by incredible people, by awesome young adults who keep having babies. Amen. Amen. Keep them coming. By incredible senior adults who tell me how much they pray for me, and they pray twice as much for my wife. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I'm glad that all of this is possible because he lives. Amen. Amen. Because Christ lives, we live. And not only a little bit. Your heavenly daddy doesn't get mad about what you do, but he sure gets heartbroken about what you do without. When we forego peace and joy and hope and love, his heart breaks because that cross and that empty tomb were given so that you could have the fullness of his spirit, of his life, right here and right now. I've said it before and I'll say it again. If I got to wait until I'm dead to start enjoying the benefits of my faith in Christ, what's the point? New life starts now, here, today, tomorrow, and every day until I'm face to face in heaven with my Savior. Amen. 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 Would you listen to the words of this last song as we close our time together? Yes, you can clap along if you like. If you know the words, hum them or sing them until your neighbor slaps you.
Praise the Lord. Friday is fast. Sunday is here, and he is risen. Amen. Amen. He is risen indeed. Go in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Greet one another as you go. Eat a piece of cake on your way out and enjoy the beautiful day the Lord has made. God bless you. There's plates at the back if you want to give some money to the fence. We're looking for $980 to get somebody else to fix the fence for a change. Or if you can do it for less, submit your bid to Jenny Smith. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed. Go in the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior. Thank you to all of you who helped with uh, breakfast for setup and everything else that you did. Cody, Shelly's trying to communicate.